Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some Halloween things. <laughs> so I've actually already read the short stories for this video and I'm basically just going to be doing a tiny tier ranking I guess is how I'm gonna call it I guess. So as many of you probably know and have probably read already potentially so Amazon with Kindle Unlimited have unreased a collection called Creature Feature and there are I think six is there six? Six short stories by the most popular and some I actually haven't heard of before uh, horror authors and I was so excited to start this six and they're very very short stories like I think the longest one audiobook length was like an hour and a half that's at slow speed so I think I read the two longest ones in under an hour so they're very very quick if you have not read them I'm not gonna be giving me any spoilers I'm just gonna be talking about which ones I liked which ones I didn't like and we're gonna be starting off with the ones that I didn't like I feel like we just need to like you know get into it so coming in in six place my least favorite with a one star is in bloom by paul tremblay yikes i really hated this one <laughs> This one was just weird. I didn't really understand what was going on half the time. Uh, I, 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 I don't even really know how to explain this one without giving anything away. But it's basically following a woman, kind of, who is interviewing a guy who saw something, I think, when he was a kid. And he saw something very weird and she wants to like do an, an article about it and none of it really makes sense and <laughs> it has to do with like algae and like all of these have to do with cre like they're creatures it's creature feature so like again i don't really want to say what the creature is in this one but it has to do with algae and like swamp i think it's just weird and there's a part in it that i'm just like no <laughs> no and it was just no that one was absolutely terrible uh, I feel like this just confirmed Paul Tremblay's weirdness and his writing style so if you like Paul Tremblay's writing style and his stories and his weirdness you might actually like this one but I, I did not like this one so that definitely came in last place but I feel really bad because I really didn't love any of these <laughs> I forgot to mention that there were some that held my attention much longer than some of the other ones so coming in fifth place we have a huge surprise ankle snatchers by Grady Hendrix I kind of just assumed the Grady Hendrix one would be the best because I've had the most luck and the most knowledge about Grady Hendrix like really haven't read that much from the other authors so Grady Hendrix was the one I was like 100% I'm gonna like this one I'm excited that was not the case <laughs> I gave this one a two star I just this one was kind of boring so as it kind of sounds like and if you look at the actual picture uh ankle snatchers have to do with monsters under the bed I Again, can't really tell you about anything else other than that because they're all short stories so if you're interested in any of them based on kind of like the picture or their explanation of what it is then I would definitely check it out so ankle snatchers is about our main character who has this like absolute fear of what's under his bed and he follows like a set of rules and he is known as the guy whose dad was put into jail for killing I think the mom so there's a lot of background in this one that I actually was pretty happy with however I didn't love some of the graphic scenes it was a bit graphic for me I was very grossed out and there was also ugh, Grady Hendrix did the thing that I hate in horror and specifically a lot of male horror writers do which is he described the woman's breasts for no reason and I was like why like that was so unnecessary and I, that actually tanked my rating a lot because once he did that I was so out of the story <laughs> like instead of saying because he used it to describe like where like someone being dragged and where they like he could see but like again it wasn't necessary he could have said it was up to her collarbones or something like that it wasn't necessary what he did it was just gratuitous and unnecessary and it really pissed me off to be honest <laughs> I really hate it uh, if you don't have an issue with that and you like Grady Hendrix I would go ahead and try it it's one of the shorter ones and it does manage to pack in 
a lot of background compared to some of the other ones. So I would try this one, but that really kind of killed it for me. Coming in at number four is Big Bad by Chandler Baker. I actually have not heard of this author before, so I was really excited to give it a try. This was, this was a difficult one. I think I gave this one two and a half stars. I liked the story of this one actually a lot. I thought this one had a lot of really good buildup, thought it was very interesting, but I really, a lot of these came down to the ending. I was disappointed with how this one ended because it's just, when I read, this is my problem. This is my problem. This is more of a me problem. I don't like depressing horror. I know that's kind of crazy. But I really like horror that has kind of like, there's a good ending or there's something uplifting about it or it's, and, and I would say pretty much none of these have that. <laughs> I would say none of these have that. And that was really a downer. It was really a downer. Like I like, it's, I feel like it's why I like horror movies better because generally in horror movies, you have the final girl who is badass and awesome and she survives. And I feel like a lot of times books are like, no. <laughs> Like it does happen, but that's why I feel like I like young adult horror better because our main character tends to survive. But I feel like a lot of times in adult horror, your main character doesn't even survive or they're like horribly disfigured or something terrible happens to them. So I just don't love that. And that's pretty much what all of these were, which is really sad. But except for one, there was one that wasn't, but it's kind of, it, I'm, I'm not going to tell you which one it is. You'll have to read them to find out which one had even remotely of a good ending. <laughs> And it, and, it, and it might not be number one either because some of, I kind of judge these based off of the overall story when normally it would be my gut reaction after I finished reading it. Instead I did because I had a bad gut reaction all of them. <laughs> Instead I did overarching story. Back to what I was talking about. I just completely went off tangent. Uh, but I really liked the story. I thought it was very interesting. It was a different way of doing, it's a werewolf story. That's it, very obvious it's a werewolf story and has to do with a couple. And you're kind of confused exactly what's going on between them because they're obviously in a fight and they're not happy with each other. And there's about to be something, something's about to happen. So it's interesting because you don't know if you're going to be following the wife. You don't know if you're going to be following the husband. You don't know if you're going to be following both of them. You don't know if one of them is the werewolf or somebody else's. So it's very, it keeps you on your toes and then uh it just keeps getting interesting and it really it really did have me until the ending and i really just didn't like the ending with the rest of the story coming in at number three we have it waits in the woods by josh mallerman this one gets a three star i think the rest are three star three and a half i did not get up to a four star <laughs> this one was really interesting the reason this one actually is not rated higher because i actually really enjoyed this one However, this one was the most anticlimactic out of all of them. I feel like this one had a really interesting, eerie kind of buildup, but once you got to the actual like thing happening at the end, it was just so anticlimactic that it felt like there should have been another like 100 pages in this one because it just left you kind of like, oh, this is what happened. And you're like, what? Like after all that buildup, all that difficult and that eerie feeling, you just kind of are left like, this is what happened. And I didn't love that. I didn't love that one. Uh, this one is following our main character whose sister went missing three years previously and she finally decides I'm going to go find her. And she thinks that this thing in the woods, uh, which is actually a urban legend. I don't remember where it's located. I don't know if it's actually where the story said it's located, but there's supposedly like this creature that lives across a bridge. And if you call to it, it'll like steal your face. And I actually have heard of that because uh, one of our ghost hunter shows actually went to the bridge to go do whatever, to mess around with it. So I was actually kind of, I was excited that I'd actually heard about that one before and they used like a real story or a real urban legend and i feel like it did a really good job of her wandering through the woods like uncomfortable for a lot of the story so i did like that but again the ending really just it needed a little bit more it needed a bigger oomph at the ending for me the next one ooh, the next one it's i feel like the top two are basically tied but i, I will say the other one edged it out a little bit coming in second place is best of luck by jason mott this one was 
very interesting. <laughs> this one was very interesting. This is almost, I thought it was going to be like something off of a leprechaun because the, the thing is a four leaf clover. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a weird leprechaun story. It's not. It is not. It is not what I expected. It is gruesome, but in a way that I can still stomach. And it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And I was very impressed. I, I, yeah, this one's still got a three and a half because again, the ending just a little bit hurt me with this one, but this one is really good. This one was really good. I would highly recommend this one. I can't even really tell you what this is about, but it basically opens up with these two men who are best friends and one is basically about to kill the other one and they have a conversation. The whole thing is just this conversation and it's shockingly good for not having much else going on in the background. It's a very interesting short story. So I would recommend this one. And then coming in at number one, the biggest surprise of all, we have The Pram by Joe Hill. And I feel like it has to win because I hate stories about children. And this is literally an entire story about like a child. And I was shocked. Like if you can make me really like some, it still comes out of three and a half. <laughs> Cause like, I really didn't like the ending of this one. I liked the end, probably the one with the best ending was Best of Luck. I liked the ending of that one the best just because it was the most interesting, but I just, the pram had me in a chokehold while I was reading it. And it was definitely a four, four and a half while I was reading it, but that ending dropped it down to a three and a half. However, this one is following our main two characters. They are a married couple who just had a miscarriage. It's very sad. It's actually very, very sad reading about. And it's kind of a story about dealing with grief or not dealing with grief and what what lengths people will go to to deal with their grief and it is disturbing it is gripping it is like you are in it you are in it you want to know what's happening it was so good i was so impressed with this one that again i'm i'm shocked because i never thought i would read a joe hill just because i've been bad i, mean, I know joe hill is separate from his dad but because i don't really read stephen king i haven't really read joe hill either and his books are also really long so i was just kind of like amp eh. but i feel like now that i've read a short story and it was the writing was so good i'm like do I want to read a full length Joe Hill now? And I think I do. <laughs> so I feel like it has to win because it made me want to read something else he's written. It made me like a story about miscarriages and babies, which is like hard no for me. And it was just, I could not put it down. I could not think about anything else and I just wanted to read it. So I feel like, I feel like that's gotta be number one. So anyway, that is my definitive ranking of the creature feature stories. I feel like some could move around. I was debating between It Waits in the Woods and Best of Luck, but overall Best of Luck, because I did like the ending better of that one, it was more of a surprise. I was actually a little surprised about what was going on. Uh, that one's got to be higher. So, but then the bottom is pretty set. <laughs> the bottom is pretty set. I had more of a visceral reaction to the ones I didn't like than the ones I did like, except for the pram, which I was like, didn't like the ending still, but the whole rest of the story was amazing. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys go and check them out. I'm curious if you guys have read them or like what your ranking is. If you have read them, I would love that. And that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. So make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Make sure you liked it if you liked the video. And make sure you comment down below. Like I said, I want to know if you guys have read this. If you're interested in reading them, which ones you want to read. Give me your ranking if you have read them. And that's pretty much it or just, you know, anything. That's all I got for you today. So I will see you guys in the next one.